let's talk about us and them. In this case, what I mean with us is we Americans or we of the Western world, and them would be third world populations. We get horrified when we hear what happens in third world countries often. We're horrified when we hear, for example, that here recently in South Africa there's riots and killing and murderous activities toward foreigners. That foreigners are being run out and beaten and told they're not wanted and cleared of the country and killed at times if they don't cooperate. Their stores are being broken into and um, they are made to feel extremely unsafe if they do stay by these certain roguing groups. So we think, ha, how terrible, how low life that is, how uncivilized. Let's think again. What are we doing? How do we feel towards the illegal immigrants? Or how do we feel in our country towards immigrants who are taking the better jobs, who seem to have success in businesses when we don't have success? What are we saying in our country we feel about others who want to come and partake of the goodness we have here? We actually do exactly the same thing. On a maybe less obvious level, we don't exactly run them out, but we build huge fences, and we make sure they get busted wherever they're trying to work. We, in our hearts, will often hold a grudge if someone who is from someone else, somewhere else gets a job that we don't get, we being who we think is the rightful um, owners, owners, shall I say, of this country. We forget that in this country, unless we're Native American, we're all immigrants. We all migrated in. We all came, some just sooner than others. And because we came sooner, it's our land, and we get to keep others out. So we aren't really that different. Now let's take another example. We see, say, in Somalia, where there's brutal raping and killing for having parts of the land belong to who they consider to be we versus others that are them, different tribes, different groups that people identify with. And they say it's justified because it's over water that is getting more and more scarce, and therefore farmable land that is scarce and food that is scarce. And we say, how horrible, what brutality to chop people to pieces, to rape them, to mutilate them, to burn down their villages. And yet, look what we do in our more refined ways, shall I say. We absolutely believe that we should have what we need to live, as we think, on our standard of living, and how much of it we should have. And we can do whatever we choose to get that. So when Iraq, a number of years ago, decided to give their new oil line to the Brazilians instead of the Americans, we were totally entitled to overrun them and establish ourselves permanently there, by the way, if you haven't noticed. We have no intention of leaving. We're setting up permanent military and um, industrial setups in Iraq. Because we needed the oil, they had it. They had a bad guy, even though he was our guy we'd installed. They had a guy we could use as an excuse. We could lie about reasons to invade. We could conveniently use that someone had attacked us, so let's attack someone back. And we have killed hundreds of thousands of people in this. Hundred thousands are homeless because of it. Why? Because they had what we wanted, and we felt entitled to it. Without that oil, how can we keep living the way we live? So how are we so different from those, the warlords, the Jangjaweed, that are we so different? We kill, we mutilate, 
but we keep ourselves separate from it, imagining we don't. Now, we look at all the societies that we say they're so primitive, they're so warring. No one does the war we do. And then we talk about the primitive societies having no freedoms. Do you know that the USA has only 5% of the population of the world and we have 20% of all prisoners in the world are in our prisons in this country, land of the free? This is the country of democracy, of rights. If we saw any other country having that high a proportion of prisoners, we would be screaming civil rights violations. What is going on here? So who is we and them? We thinking we're so much more evolved and civilized and the them who are so primitive. The difference is only in how we manage to sanitize it when we do it. We go kill people in other countries mostly. And the ones we incarcerate in this country, we keep hidden where most of us know nothing about it. We take what we want in the name of democracy and Christianity and right and good instead of in words that we would consider more primitive. So we have sanitized our inhumanity towards other people into such a form that we can be relaxed in our houses and think we're good people and this country is a good country in the world. We are good in what we were formed to be in the USA. We were formed to be something of a greater truth. We were formed saying we don't need dictators and kings and queens to rule over us because we will govern ourselves in integrity and in truth. And we will do what it takes to establish a just nation. We will commit ourselves to that, every one of us. And what have we done? We've let special interests take over while they give us bread and circus. That's what the Romans called it. They said, give the people bread as food, let them have enough food, and circus as an entertainment, and they will pay no attention to what their government's doing. That's what we've sunken into. We pay no attention, and we imagine how wonderful we are because we like to think of ourselves that way. In fact, we have ceased to govern ourselves, and our government is run by special interests that are trying to take over the world. Did you notice? The next territory they're trying to prepare us for is Iran. When are we going to wake up and actually decide to govern ourselves, to hold to that great truth upon which this nation was built that is so admired by other countries? We'll need to care more than about American Idol and Monday Night Football and the silliness out of Hollywood and the scandals and the, all the entertainment we go for. We'll need to get up off our couches and notice what's going on and get involved and be active in bringing justice and peace and right and fairness to our country, to our people, and to all those that we deal with. Will you do it? Do you stay in touch with the news? Do you contact your congressman? Do you stay on them about what's right? Do you stay on demanding that our government change? Are you ready to actually make your voice heard? To care? To get up and make a difference? Will you stand for justice and for peace? Or will you just let it all go to hell in a handbasket here? without noticing, and then after it's going, I didn't know, I thought we were good. We need to wake up. It's time now.